So I even had you on the banner of the page. I see that. I'm like, woohoo. That's know. and the cute picture of Jason and I. There we are. That's it. Of course, it's not up on mine. I'm sitting right next door to it. And yeah, I am. Me, mm -hmm. <laughs> me, me either. <laughs> Hello, everybody on Facebook. Welcome to another Hi, everyone. Al's Nest Barbecue show live. There we are. We'll be starting on the radio side in just a few moments. Our guest tonight is Megan Day from Burnt Finger Barbecue out of Kansas City. We'll be going live on Chattanooga's Talk Radio 102.3 in just a few moments. Megan, I'll do a little intro, and then um, you'll you'll know when you're on. Okay. It'll be the most impressive introduction you've ever had. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm, I'm excited. I'm sure you I'm sure you've gone back and watched all the YouTubes. <laughs> I've been seeing. Did your homework? You know, I gotta do you gotta do your homework. There it is. We've been live for a whole minute and twenty mm, seconds yes now. Yes, we have. All right, I'm pushing it out. Push it all over the place. You'll have plenty push of time. Push it. Push it. And the archive, right? What? And it'll archive it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll uh, download it to my YouTube channel. 344 of the most smart influential. people. Influential. People, I mean, subscribers. loyal, <laughs> dedicated, you know, and influential loving. folks. The nice thing about my YouTube channel is you don't have to sit through any ads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Because yeah. nobody's willing to pay for them. <laughs> because, <laughs> because when the people come and pitch their products, they, they'll say, well, what about Steve Ray? Nah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, no. That's awesome. Well, and you've got advertising behind you. So but one day, in. one day, so the right person is going to watch it. One of these days. It only takes that one right person to watch your YouTube channel. And then, boom. Yeah. It is true. I know. I know. It's yeah. it's it's about planting the seeds. When you get a John Marcus to watch it, you're the next barbecue pit masters. It's true. Did y'all try out? Did y'all try out for that? You know, we were approached, and oh, without a point, Tony Sanders out to hold that five seven, just, yeah. Yeah. every Saturday morning. Be sure to check us out on Facebook for our podcast. When you gotta know, you turn to us. WGOW Radio, Talk Radio one hundred two point three. Welcome to the weekend, and welcome to the Barbecue Show with Steve Ray. The Barbecue Show is brought to you by the Alistair's Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop in Ottawa, by the historic Midnight Oil Service Station in Ottawa, by Michelin Tires, because so much is riding on your time, and by all the great barbecue products and supplies at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop. I know you've got questions, and we've got answers, so pick up the phone, 423 267 one oh two three and let's talk some barbecue all right all it's right. the weekend and it's time to start smoking and grilling right here on the owl's nest barbecue show live on talk radio 102.3 and simulcasting on the owl's nest barbecue facebook page this is a live broadcast that means you can use the telephone and call in 423-267-1023 423-267-1023 one oh two three. You've got questions, and we've got answers to your grilling and food smoking questions for this weekend. Our broadcast partner, Backyard Smokers Barbecue on Facebook, Facebook rather, and also Dead Broke Barbecue on YouTube. Another broadcast partner of the Owls Nest Barbecue Show Live. We're in touch, so you stay in touch and get in touch. Follow Owls Nest Barbecue on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And as always, we download every episode to our popular, popular YouTube channel. I'm just kidding. It's not popular at all. 267-1023. Uh, We're going to get to our guest here in just a few minutes. But first, hey, what's new in barbecue this week? Brought to you by Specs Meats, located in Cambridge Square, right here in Oldowa. People ask me all the time, Jeff, is there a butcher shop close by? There's an awfully good one close by. Yeah, right. Right. We were there day one. Remember, we did that live broadcast. Yes, we did. Day one from Chris's place, and um, great, great operation. His family-run operation. Uh, you know, small butcher shop right here in Ottawa. Great steaks. They got fish. They even serve lunch. 
Specs meets in Cambridge Square. Go by and tell Chris. Say, Chris, I heard Steve and Jeff talking about you on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show. He will appreciate that. Some of the best sausage I've ever had. He makes his own in-house sausages. They're phenomenal. They're good. Good stuff. Uh, The number one thing from last week is still the number one thing going on in our barbecue store, and that is the release of the Royal Oak charcoal pellets that are available now at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Udawa. Jeff, I I don't think a whole lot of people are selling these right now, I think, because I'm getting requests from people all over the southeast. Mm -hmm. Do you ship? Well, I noticed that you've gone through a ton of them. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you had it fully stocked, and then all of a sudden, walk in, there's none. We've, half the pile has gone. Correct. So mm-hmm. we'll, be, we'll have to order some more soon. But uh, they are available, the new Royal Oak Charcoal Pellets, genuine charcoal pellets available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store in Ottawa. And, of course, the next big thing in barbecue is actually next Saturday night, July 17th, on the square in Ringgold. It's the Barbecue Pig Out Night, and Owl's Nest Barbecue will be there serving our Texas Trinity of Meat, brisket, pulled pork, and sausage. The event is 6 to 9. There's a barbecue contest also, plus a People's Choice contest. So come out, stand up our barbecue, and vote for us for People's Choice. Wish you were going to be there. You're going to be gone. You're on your motorcycle trip, aren't you? I'm going to be gone until the 28th, yeah. I'm going to get lost for a bit. Well, that's all right. You'll like the next one. And, of course, the big thing always is the Green Mountain Pellet Smoker and Grills. Great flavor without the offset effort of traditional barbecue. We have all three sizes of the Green Mountain Grills in stock, ready to go. All of that and a whole lot more at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store in Ottawa. Now, we're going to get to our, our – I can't – you know, we appreciate all of our guests that come on the show. And and we appreciate their 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 position in barbecue, their everything. But sometimes you get a guest and you just can't believe that this person said yes. You know, you you, you send the email and you're expecting you know, like to, but you know, especially you, from a little town like Ottawa, yeah, Tennessee. Ottawa. You know, a small town, and you get a big time guest like what we have tonight. Well, this this person is living the barbecue dream. She's named one of Southern Living's. Most influential women in Southern Barbecue. She is the pit master and co-owner of Kansas City's premier barbecue competition and food company. Since its founding in 2008, her barbecue team, Burnt Finger Barbecues, racked up countless awards on the competition barbecue circuit, and including 15 state championships, first place chicken at the American Royal, and that's a real big deal, wow. and second place ribs, that's even a bigger deal, at the Memphis and May World Championships. She is a chopped grill masters champion. They're always fun to watch. A contestant on barbecue brawl that's going on right now. We'll talk about that. She's a regular on the Today Show. The Today Show. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, hey, uh, the, the, that doesn't mean much. The Today Show's on the line. Steve, <laughs> would you like to be on? Food Network and many local morning shows. Chattanooga, I am so happy to introduce to you from Kansas City the pit master of Burnt Finger Barbecue, Megan Day. Megan, thank you for being with us. Hello. Thank you for having me. I, I, this, is, this, is, this is one of those... One of those shows that just um, made made our day when you said oh. when you said yes when well, you I'm said yes. I'm happy to be here. Um, all right, with all the things that you've done, and we're going to get to a whole lot of stuff tonight, including yeah. including the Royal Oak stuff, because that's why I wanted you on because you are a Royal Oak ambassador, and you know yes. all about this stuff. So and, and so you're going to educate us on Royal Oak products, but but my first question is Savannah Guthrie really that nice? in person as she, she is. She is a doll. She is amazing. Hoda, Savannah, I mean, they really all are just delightful and they really make you feel special when you're there. Sometimes they'll pop into the green room and say hi. Sometimes you won't see them until you're out on set, but they're always just thrilled. And if you've ever noticed when you watch some of those morning shows, I mean, they are popping from subject to subject to subject. So the oh, fact yeah. that they take the time to say hello and thank you for being a part of their show really says so much about how much they value having you know guests on and what keeps me coming back for more i guess it's just they're such a great great team 
Well, see, you're the only person I've known that, that knows these people. So I mean, we, we might we might be here all night, an hour on the radio, and we might be here for three more hours. Yeah, there might be a three-hour after show. I, I know. So so we're going to get to a whole lot of stuff. Um, let's start it off. You are currently, you were, the barbecue brawl that you were on yes. is currently airing on Food Network. And Correct. And you were, um, I, I'm going to say voted off or... I was eliminated. There you go, eliminated. Um, <laughs> How could that happen? In the let's, let's see, the third the third show, correct? Correct. Third show, correct. you and you were on Eddie Jackson's team. Yes. And what was so weird about this is the, the Christine, who I, I'm, she was on Eddie's team, correct? Yes. Yeah, they. Uh, no, she was on Simon's team. Okay, Christine, so they. Christine okay. Fitzgerald. Uh -huh. Okay, she was the yep. first one that was eliminated. Correct. And then the young, uh, the young man, uh, who was your teammate on Eddie's yes. team, uh, Maxell. You, uh -huh. Yeah, and and then and then you were eliminated the next the next episode. But before we get to that, let's let's go back to episode two, okay? And if people are, are out there watching with me uh, this series, I'm I, I'm a barbecue show junkie. I, I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. So. When when what was that? What was the person's name? The second person eliminated. You you said Max. It. Max. Uh -huh, Max. Right. When Max was eliminated, it, this this was I think a a I don't know if it was a uh, a put on by Eddie, but he really did look angry, and yeah. he said something to the judges that I've never seen anybody say anymore that he disagreed with their decision. Was yeah. he really as mad as he looked? Yeah, he was. And, and, you know, the premise of this show kind of plays into that a little bit because two teams were safe and one team was not. And so he did not feel like our team had the least successful cook. He felt like another team had, a, had you mm -hmm. know, a little more downs um on on their cook and so the fact that our team was chosen as the least successful team meant that someone on that team had to go and so you know drama tv magic whatever you want to say you know they had pinpointed max was it max was the one who had the least successful dish and unfortunately you know they kind of made it seem like it was either me or max were going and the whole time it was Max that they had kind of pinpointed as the one they felt did not deserve to continue on in the, in the competition. And it was a big shock because he had done so well. Previously in that episode, he had the most successful yeah, dish. And yeah. it was kind of one of those, you know, nice arcs of the best guy loses in the end. And, you know, it happens. That's part of the game, I guess. Yeah, you go from uh, the, the goat to the, the goat. Yeah. Goat, to, goat to goat, you know the good goat yeah. to the bad goat. What um, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's run through them. I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna use you to satisfy my curiosity about people. Okay, <laughs> ask away. Uh, um, we're speaking with Megan Day. She is the uh, pit master of Burnt Finger Barbecue. She's from Kansas City, Missouri. She is a a celebrated um, barbecue pit master. She's a professional pit master. She's been on television. Um, I, I, have you done a movie yet other than home movies? That's well, a documentary. Documentary, that? <laughs> that's a movie. That's a movie, okay. And so she does all that really neat stuff in, in, in barbecue. And you don't get to be to that level, Jeff, unless you're good. You know, you can't no, fake it. You, you have to be accomplished to do yeah, these kind of things. You can't fake it at the level that Megan's at. So uh, let's start out um, the people that I'm interested in. Rodney Scott. Tell me yes. about Rodney Scott. Very humble a he's a quiet man he's listening he's helpful he's curious he has his opinions he knows what he likes he doesn't like vegetables <laughs> he likes <the laughs> no. meat. yeah but he was he was he was wonderful i would love to have gotten to know him better that's that's one re two regrets that i had one mm -hmm. that i didn't cook enough meat <laughs> wanted to cook more meats and well, i'm sure we'll get into that question and two, that I didn't get a chance to really get to know him as well. I, I did get to know Brooke a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I have a question about her. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you about Bobby Flair, Michael Simon, because 
I mean, everybody knows about these guys. And even Eddie Jackson is, yeah. he has come, you know, from a football background, my playing for Miami to where he is at in the Food Network now, to me is an incredible journey in and of itself. Tell me about uh, Lou Holter, Damon's <laughs> wife. Because yes. when she was on there, I said, that's, da that's, that's Damon's wife. And I've met them. I've met them at World Food before. And I couldn't believe she was on there. She, she, I mean, she obviously deserves it. Tell me about her. Lou is, she was my, she was my mama, you know, like, like you kind of have someone that you hang out with and, and you knew she had a, anything that you needed. She was, she was there for you. She and I were um, kindred spirits, if you will. We had a lot of fun, very similar sense of humor. She does deserve to be there. She cooks, oh, she cooks um, a lot. She will tell you she is not the dessert cook that, that her husband is. You know, but you know, she runs a business, she's a mom, mm -hmm. she does competitions. And you know, when it comes to competition, it's not just about the cooking and the meat, it's procuring the items and putting everything together. And then even the cleanup afterward, you know, there's so much work that goes into, you know, competition. And, and when there's a true competitor, I really, I respect them because they know everything that goes along with that. But then for her to have her quirky, fun sense of humor, it was, it was a lot of fun. I was really excited when I saw that she was also going to be on the show. I think she hey, brings, you, I think she brings a lot of person. So what, Kurt? Barry. It's at our first break here. And when we come back, we have a Bruce on the line. He has a question about smoked meatloaf for you guys. All right. Sounds good. You're listening to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio 102.3. <laughs> the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply is now a Royal Oak charcoal dealer. And we have the soon, we have the soon to be famous Royal Oak 100% charcoal pellets in stock. Charcoal flavor on your pellet grill is what you get when you get Royal Oak pellets at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Udwa. We've got Megan Day from Kansas City. Stay with us here on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show Live. We'll be right back. The humble L. Selvage says Rodney Sons just like this. We've got a... Um, <laughs> We've got a caller on the other side of the break, too, okay, Megan? Hours of information online. Remember, we are still live on Facebook. Um, we, can, we, can, we can continue this interview on the, on the Facebook side. Yeah. Um, my buddy, Christopher Prieto. Christopher and I went to the same barbecue school in 2015, Donnie Bray's, up in Bowling Green, yeah. Kentucky. And um, that was after his appearance on Barbecue Pitmasters. And, of course, I was... You know, all gaga over, you know, here's another barbecue guy. I wanted to get his autograph and my picture taken with him. Uh, is he as intense as he looks on television? Because he sure looks intense. More. Real, more. <laughs> more intense. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He's just, I mean, he bleeds it. He dreams it. He got everything. Even just talking about his family and um, he has siblings that, that they all grew up and, yeah. and talking about, like, that certain recipes that his grandmother made them do over and over and over again until they got it right, you know, just constantly a student of um, cooking. So, yeah, he is an intense guy. I think uh, he and his wife have, uh, I want to say, maybe four, yeah. four, four children. Kiddos. I mean, we're a real, a real family guy. Yeah. And um, his, um, I think his restaurant in, in that little that little North Carolina, I think it's doing pretty good, too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah every I mean, time I turn around, he says sold out. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I thought the the quirky judge. What's his name? Not Rodney, but the, Carson. What, who's Carson it? Cressley? Yeah. What, what What is his background? Is I I don't know what he What does he do? Is he like just a personality? Because he's he's kind of the leader of the judges, and yeah. he, and he act, and he's very he's very funny. I think. I mean, he is yeah. really funny. He says some funny things, but it seems like when it's time to judge, he gets kind of serious. Yeah. He does. He, you know, he is a student of aesthetics, if you will, the fashion industry. He was on um, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy in that first run. I don't. When was that? 2008, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't even know that time frame. He was in on that movement of taking a gentleman that was disheveled and making him look fabulous. You know, mm -hmm. and so, but he's continued to kind of be a a host and he also was very very big in like the equestrian world and so if you think of that i mean it's very pristine and pedigree and so when he would get really serious it was because he was looking at the aesthetics of things and the textures of things so it made sense from his background what he was pulling whereas i think brooke and 
and everybody and, and Rodney were a little bit more on the flavor side of it. You know, I like I like this mix of judges. The uh, mm-hmm. the last ones last year were um, let's see, it was Chris, um, yep, Mo, Mo um, and Amy, Amy, and who was the other one? Mo, Mo, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you know, those three they're they're all they're barbecue guys. Now, I know yeah. Amy can step out of the barbecue box when she, when she has to, and I'm sure Chris can too. But um, but uh, we ready to come back in, Kurt? Red Eye Radio, seven nights a week, W-G-O-W. Talk Radio, 102.3. Hey, welcome back to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show Live. Make sure you visit our Memphis section at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply. Malcolm Reed, Heath Riles, Mark Williams, Mark Lambert, Memphis Original Rub and Sauce Plus Barbecue Mojo Rubs. It'll take you all the way to Memphis, just like Mata Hoople. Our number is 267-1023. We're back with Megan Day of Burnt Finger Barbecue from Kansas City. We've got Bruce on line one. Two lines open at 267-1023. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, Yes, Steve. Uh, Nice to talk to you guys. Uh, I've got a quick question about, you know, the smoked meatloaf that I've been – I've heard yourself talk about it and other other people you've had on the show – but my wife and I does a lot of meatloaf, you know, but in the oven, traditional stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. deer meat, whatever. But how in the world, if you're going to smoke one, and I, I, it's, uh, how do you get it on the grill? You know, because meatloaf, it wants to, how do you, what do you cook it in? Where it won't fall apart or, or what, you know, like a lot of grease comes into the pan. What, that, that's the question I had. We was going to try it this weekend on a traditional smoker, not one of them. Real fancy ones. It's got the fire box to the side, you know, mm-hmm. one of them kind of grills. And I was just curious, what what would you put the meatloaf in to keep it intact? Okay, what I'm going to do, Bruce, I'm going to uh, let Megan tell you how she does it because I do a pretty good one, but I'm sure she does a really good one. Megan, go ahead and <laughs> explain to Bruce how you do your smoked meatloaf, and I'll and I'll add mine at the end. Well, you know, I use binders. I use egg and I use crackers, and it binds it enough that it doesn't come apart on the grill. I put it right on the the grates and for the smoker and the offset, so it's a little bit cooler side. Obviously, I, I kind of know where where my cool pocket is on my smoker, and then I just make sure that underneath that anything that it's going to drip on has foil wrap around it. And like for me, I have a little bucket that allows grease to shine, you know, come out. I shove a paper towel down in there and make sure it can catch any of those extra juices or any of the grease that might come off. But I, the way I create my meatloaf, it has enough binder that I've never had an issue with it falling through. So might might back off some of the wet liquids maybe that you're using if you're afraid that it might slump into the grates okay ma'am that makes sense I, yeah I, I got you i got you right on some of the marinating stuff that that makes a lot of sense if we was gonna try it and i just didn't want it to end up in the bottom of the grill but if you but if you do i i mean i I would use like a tinfoil pan. I mean, that's probably where I would go until it got firm enough. And then maybe you could take it off of there and then put it on the grates. Um, that might be another option. Now, I don't know what, what Steve and the crew might do with their meatloafs, but that's just the way we roll here in Kansas City. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much for your information. Mr. Steve, you like, what was you going to say? I cook mine. I cook mine in a loaf pan. And so only the top is exposed for the smoke. Um, but but I top mine off with barbecue sauce, and I always put it in there real cold because cold meat accepts smoke a whole lot better than warm meat. And um, I, but the reason I do that, Bruce, is I like mine super juicy. And mm-hmm. the way I think the way that um, Megan does hers, it's good, but you, you lose some of that juiciness because I've done it. I've done it both ways, and uh, I just like mine when I when I put my fork in it. I like it to be. I like to be super juicy, and that way I put it in, when I put it in the refrigerator, uh, I just leave it in the loaf pan, and when I, I slice it and reheat it in the microwave, mm-hmm. it um it just it's 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 it tastes just like the day you uh, took it out of the uh, you took it out of the smoker. So what you um, what you give up in smoke, um, you get. I think for me it's more convenience, and you get a little more um, uh, get a little more juiciness. But you can also cheat a little, Bruce. They got this product called Liquid Smoke, and it only takes it on. And on, don't laugh, Megan. Don't laugh, Megan. It's not a substitute. It's a addition. 
it's an, an addition exactly addition to the recipe just ask david bosca yeah. and um and, and uh and, and you'll you'll get a great flavor i do and you know I, i'll tell you if you don't want to use liquid we buy a mesquite and a hickory powder just off of amazon that i'll sprinkle a little bit goes a long way but i'll sprinkle that in with my food if i know i want a little extra smoke flavor so and it won't introduce more liquid so just a heads up that that exists out there jeff how do you do yours i do most of my mine in the oven because it's just convenient but what i'll do if i'm going to smoke it is i will put it on a riser put it in a uh, pan like steve does and i'll poke holes in the bottom and i'll put a pan underneath it to catch all those drippings so i'll be able to smoke it around the whole thing and not have that you know grease thing come out so we get a fire See, Bruce, there's all sorts of ways to get to Chicago. Like, you know, smoking times, uh, Ben, I ain't never done one. Uh, like, you know, how hot would you smoke one? Like maybe 250, you know, your regular smoking temperature and kind of how long? Um, Megan, go ahead and answer and then I'll answer. I, 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 my sweet spot's 275. That's where I cook most of most of that type of a um, type of meat. And then, you know, really, I, I cook by uh, internal temperature. So... You know, I probably would take I would take mine to probably 170 ish. I don't know what you would do, Steve, but I would I would probably take it into that range. Uh, Bruce, I cook mine at 350. Oh, you go hot. I fire that pellet yeah. cooker up and I put it up there and I put um, two in there with a thing of macaroni, Megan, and um, <laughs> and I let my let it roll. And Bruce, mine's done in an hour, just like it, just like you were using oh. it as an oven. I use my pellet cooker as an oven. Yeah. I've heard you, Steve, talk about your macaroni. I'm going to try that next. I didn't, I didn't want to get too gun hole and get run plum off for not having <laughs> supper made like I'm bragging about, right? Yeah, man, I, I tell you, that macaroni, I, and I stole that, Megan, from John Lewis over in Charleston. And um, and it is, it is without a doubt, the best recipe I've ever I've ever tasted. And I'm not a cook. I don't do a lot of them. But I am a macaroni aficionado, as like most, most, most uh, old guys are. And um, I love it. I love it, man. Bruce, appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thanks for the call. Steve, thank you, all guys, and enjoy the show, Steve. And thank you, ma'am. It's been nice talking to you. Thank you. You as well. Thanks, yeah. Bruce. You know, Megan, we talk about barbecue all the time, and the, the most fun thing about barbecue is uh, doing things that are unconventional, like meatloaf, macaroni. Of course, yep. it's conventional in our world, but a lot of people wouldn't even think about using their smoker to do meatloaf. Yeah, and it's I I, I do sides all the time. That's yeah. probably the one thing that, that I have the most fun with and can get creative. You know, we do barbecue meat for, you know, competition style, but it's the same thing over and over and over again. So if I feel like getting creative, it's quesadillas, it's a quiche, you name it, um, a nice side that we can, I love good charred broccoli, things like that. That's when I have a lot of fun with it. And you can play with the flavors. And, and the, the thing is you do it and then you try to remember if you liked it or if you're gonna do something completely different. <laughs> it's, that's the beauty of it. All right, we're gonna do one more question about the personalities and we're gonna shift to the, yeah. we're gonna shift the real reason you're hearing that's because of Royal Oak Charcoal. Yes. We know you, you were on Eddie Jackson's thing and I'm, I'm a big Eddie Jackson fan. I think he's great. Okay. Um, it is good guy. You you know him. You were on his team, but you 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 have got to pick. Say your husband, your uh, Jason is sick. Okay, and he says, "Honey, I just cannot make it to the Jack this year." And you've been invited to go to the Jack, and and you go, "Okay, I, I got to find somebody." And then Michael Simon and Bobby Flay call you each at d different times and say, "Megan, I want to go to the Jack Daniels with you." Now, you've got to pick Michael Simon or Bobby Flay as your cooking partner at the Jack Daniels Invitational. Which one is it going to be? It's Michael Simon all the way. Oh, oh that doesn't take yeah. long. Not, not even yeah. a – and, and our producer's even giving us the thumbs up. <laughs> Michael Simon, yeah. Really? He, he, yeah, he, he has a um, – just the way his mind works with – helping people and making sure that they're successful and you know bobby just wants to get it done there's nothing wrong with that but i'm in charge and i need someone to be there to be successful and i'm going to pick my in that situation all day every day so you're taking control of the situation you don't want that guy that's going to tell you what to do yeah <laughs> yeah. No. yeah 
and the, the the annoying laugh would be the I'd, I'd have to say, Michael, we need, <laughs> we need to talk about that annoying laugh. Yeah. Other than that, you're the you're the man, buddy. You're, you're the man. I like I like that choice. All right, we're going to talk about Royal Oak. Uh, Perry Collins has a question: Have y'all done smoked queso yet? Yes, Perry, that is one of my go-to dishes on the smoker. It's wonderful. Um, one thing of Velveeta, two things of Rotel. Um, do some sausage in the bottom of a pan with butter. Smash it up with a um, uh, mashed potato smasher real good. Uh, put a uh, one of those things of, uh, of um, uh, what's that white cheese called? What's that stuff called, Jeff? The white cheese. What's that, Megan? Queso fresco? No, or? no, no. no uh, just, uh, Chihuahua? No, cream cheese. Just white cream cheese. Throw oh, one of those in there. Cheese. Yeah, we're those, thinking <laughs> fancy. Like, we're thinking like fancy. Steve's going fancy. from the no, you're refrigerator. Talking, you're talking. You're talking, <laughs> you're talking to me here now. <laughs> and, and throw some onions in there, Perry. Put it on the uh, smoker um, at 350 degrees. And uh, when it all starts to melt down, um, just mix it up, and it'll be ready in about 45 minutes. And it tastes out of this world. It, it is, does. <laughs> it's it does. it's it's wonderful stuff. All right. Um, I tell you what, Kurt, let's take our break. Let's take our next break, Megan, then we come back, baby. It's all about Royal Oak Charcoal from here on out on the Alice Nest Barbecue Show Live here on Talk Radio 102.3. If you want a grill that will elevate your outdoor cooking area, then look no further than the Memphis Wood-Fired Pellet Grill, 0 to 350 degrees in under 10 minutes. Plus, the built-in steak sear section will make your already amazing steaks just a little bit better. The Memphis Wood-Fired Pellet Grill, available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Our guest, Megan Day, from Burnt Finger Barbecue, Kansas City, Missouri, right here on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show, live on Talk Radio. We'll be right back. News, weather, and traffic on time. Megan, do you, do you delve into seafood much? I don't. Okay. I really don't. I love it, but it's just not accessible here that much. I mean, it, we can get it, but kind of we're pretty landlocked, so <laughs> we well, don't, Tom, don't Tom, really dive into it too much. Tommy, he had sent me a message, and I'll give you a, a little advice on that large salmon filet. Oh. Yeah, we had a question on Facebook about a suggestion for a large salmon filet. Um, I have a suggestion. Order, order a tenderloin. Uh, John McGuire, cream cheese. Yes, thank you, John. I don't know why I get a brain lock like that. Um, uh, you know, Perry asked about the smoked queso. Do you have a smoked queso recipe, Megan? I don't really. I really? mean, I'm surprised. I, yeah, no. I mean, around here, it's like I'll do Rotel and some uh, cream of mushroom soup mm-hmm. and Velveeta. Yeah. And some like sausage. That's that's think, kind of our go-to. You, I think I think that's what I think it's what you do. You're you're calling it. What are you calling it? Rotel. Rotel. We're calling yeah. it. I think we're calling it smoked queso. It's the same thing. Yeah. Now. Well, no, the, the Rotel is that canned stuff. But I what I, I do is I, I put chorizo in mine. Well, I put two cans of Rotel in my queso. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, so right. maybe yeah, I'm yeah, making yeah, Rotel, Barry. I may be making Rotel in this yeah. colony queso. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I think, just I think you add. Food. You're adding cheese. You're adding cream cheese, and you're adding some more Mexican flavors. That's much more of a, a queso to me. Yeah, all yeah. the Rotel is is um, roasted peppers and all that kind of stuff. Chilies. And yeah. Chilies. Yeah. Diced no, chilies. Man. And then I just I and just ground up some chorizo and I put that in there. Yes. I love chorizo. I think chorizo is one of those meats that just doesn't get enough love and doesn't get enough credit. It is so good. Perry Perry also said he used the Royal Oak uh, mixed with um, a pellet blend last weekend. Yeah. And uh, he said his uh, pork butt turned out just fantastic, awesome. That's good. I think we're going to see a lot of that mixing of that charcoal with different flavors. Yeah. I, think, I think so. I think it that's it gonna makes be the, sense. That's going to be the it, next, it that's gonna be the next big thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you've heard about the uh, Green Mountain Grill uh, pellet alarms going off, haven't you? The the sensor uh, the sensor doesn't pick up the the black it, pellets. It, it's black. it thinks it's empty. <laughs> yeah, it thinks it's empty, but yeah. it, it's easy to fix. So you just throw in a couple of uh, different colored uh, wood wood pellets. chips. Yeah, it's, it's it, I, I had, was funny. I had actually heard that when we were all testing this, mm-hmm. and so you know that's kind of a funny quirky. You know, it was funny. Um, Ninja called me and told me that, and. Um, and it wasn't 20 minutes later I had a customer call me and go, my pellet alarm's going off. And I'm, so if, if if Ninja hadn't told me, I'd, I'd have said, well, I don't know. 
I don't you're know. out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You know, I'd have said, you know, I'd have, I'd have said, take that front cover off and undo it on the board, <laughs> like yeah. I did mine. When the pellet can, have up. you tried turning it off and turning it on? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what they want to hear. Yeah, <laughs> Perry, Shut. Collins, Perry Collins said his did go off too. Yeah, you're in the middle of a five hour cook. Turn it off and turn it back on. That's, yeah, no, yeah. you can't do that. That's... Yeah, they say uh, no thanks, dude. Come and get this thing. You well, know, yeah. You don't turn it off and turn it back on in the middle of a cook. Nope. Not know. on purpose, anyway. That's funny. Thanks, everybody, for watching here on Facebook. We're speaking with uh, Megan Day from Burnt Finger Barbecue, who has graciously accepted our invitation to be on the show. I can't believe it. So maybe this will. See, Megan, you may have broke the uh, broke the barrier of famous people being on my show. Oh. <laughs> Well, this is a low bar. <laughs> Just head to our website and click on Project Shine to find out how you can help. The station for those who think. Think about it. This is Talk Radio 102.3. WGOW FM. Talk Radio 102.3. Hey, welcome hey, back welcome to the Owl's Nest, uh, Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio. The Green Mountain Pellet Grill has established itself as the leader in popular price smokers. Low and slow, hot and fast, the Green Mountain Grill can do it all. And at a cost anybody can afford, simply they're built better and they cost less. Get yours at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Old Tua. Just real quick, we were talking at the break about the pellet alarms going off on the Green Mountain Grills with the Royal Oak pellets in them. Perry said that he put a piece of white duct tape over the sensor and it worked just fine. So yep. anything can be fixed. We're speaking with Megan Day, who is a uh, Megan. Real quick, explain your relationship with Royal Oak. Yeah. So when Royal Oak approached me a few years ago, they knew that I was, um, you know, a, a lover of the pellet grill. Like that's how we choose to compete. Jason and I on the barbecue circuit with our team, Burnt Finger Barbecue, we cook on pellets, um, Cook Shack. And that, that they came to me and they said, we're working on something. You can't talk about it. Sign this non-disclosure. Um, but we've got some products we want to put in front of you. Would you, would you look at them? And so I did and gave them my feedback throughout the process. And then finally, when they had this new version that is 100% charcoal pellet, down where I really was impressed with it, they approached me and said, would you help us launch this? And we'd love for you to cook with it and give us some more feedback and, you know, just really talk with people about how you use it and why you use it. And so it is um, a, a wonderful ambassador um, for the product. And really it's a family business. And that's very important to me because we're a family business right here in the heart of mm -hmm. America. So yeah. my relationship is, help them tell people how to use this stuff. Well, we um, we got it, uh, was it Aaron, two weeks ago, I think? Uh, last week. Last week, just a week, just a week. And uh, it is, um, I've never I've never sold anything that was as anticipated. It, yeah. it was kind of fun being, being in that position when people are calling you and saying, is it here yet, is it here yet? And, um, That's exciting because it's, it's very not exciting. everywhere, and and I love the fact that they have been very strategic about making sure that the the great stores and the owners that they're dealing with are getting that opportunity, and that that makes me happy as well. Yeah, we were we were when our our, our buddy uh, Craig Verhaga, you know the barbecue ninja, he's been on the yeah. show before. Um, when he when he contacted me and 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 told that they would they said they would sell to me, I was I was. I was taken aback. I just couldn't believe it that they picked me. That's exciting. And uh, it was very exciting. And um, we, um, we, I have used, I used it last week to do a, uh, a pork butt. And no, there, there was nothing, nothing that stood out wrong with this stuff. It was, I mean, you're, I'm looking for something, a, a block, a, a weird smell, um, you know, a, a funny coloring. Uh, you know, like when you use cherry, when you use cherry uh, pellets, you get a reddish maroon type flavor, and you've got midgets running behind you, by the way. I know. And, and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so this uh, this this charcoal was it was it it Megan it worked perfectly. Yeah. And are you are it you did. are you getting the same results? Because I know you cook with it a whole lot more than I do. Yeah, I am, and you know, here's the way I look at it: is I can get that charcoal flavor 
on a pellet grill. Like that's the part that blew my mind is, you know, that distinct flavor. I typically think of going and tailgating and getting that flavor when I'm at the lake and I'm cooking on charcoal and just the type of food that comes off of there. And I'm getting that on my pellet grill, which was very exciting for Mm -hmm. me because I can take charcoal and throw some wood on it and get a wood flavor, but I could never get the charcoal flavor on my wood pellet grill. And so I, I, Love that there was low ash. That was something that I was really, really looking for. And we hooked our fireboard, which is a thermometer, thermometer, cloud-based thermometer, um, and overlay and looked at the cooks to see where our spi- you know, temperatures were spiking and how hot it was getting. And I really wanted to see what the difference was. And, and was it a high heat? Because they were telling me one of the great features that they wanted to highlight was the high heat that it can get and produce that combustion. And I wanted to see it in graphic form. <laughs> I wanted to know it and it did it. It was doing exactly what it said. And the way my particular smoker cooks, I have a char on the side. It's it's really a char griller technology on the PG500 um, cook shack unit that I use. And that temperature when it's maybe three or 400 on the um, indirect side, mm-hmm. it's creeping up seven, 800 degrees on that, um, on those grates. And with this high heat on this charcoal, I was like blown away. I cooked a ribeye and like nothing flat and it was gorgeous charred. I did it reverse sear. And that's when I said, okay, this is real. This is really doing it because it got the flavors that I wanted to get, but it also allowed me to really get the char that I wanted yeah and like you said there was no off-put smell there was nothing funky about it um but i was really impressed with even like i i opened up the hopper to see how many pellets i needed you know if i needed to refill it and it had hardly burned any i, I was actually really surprised at the high heat and the it didn't go through a lot so and then I, I was able to go down to the headquarters and cook a few more dishes for them. And I remember at one point in time, I kind of panicked because I had not looked in the hopper. Um, we were cooking on a Smokin' Brothers and I opened it up and there was only like this little dip that was missing. I couldn't believe it. I had been smoking a uh, some caramel brownies um, for about an hour at that point. And like there was not even like just a little dip um, in the pellets. So I was also impressed, even at a low temperature, how few of pellets it was having to drop. Well, I did this. I did an experiment last. I had to do a, a butt for a customer for the fourth, and uh, I put a, I, I set my smoker at three ten, and I mm-hmm. uh, put that butt on. I mean, that's extremely high, I know, and um, and I used the uh, the, the uh, charcoal pellets from Royal Oak, and number one, the the pellet usage was like a third of what I would normally do at that high of a temperature. Yeah. because you know at, at 310 in a pellet cooker megan you're you know you're that's you're like dropping pellets. that's like 110 miles an hour and yeah. uh this thing it got up to temperature really my, my grill got her up to got up to 310 really fast no problems at all and it maintained it and i did the same thing you did i looked in there and thought oh, i'm gonna have to put more in there and it was just like it was just a, like a third gone yeah uh, when i was halfway because I, I did this bud in, in five and a half hours that's how that's how wonderful the Green Mountain Grill is. You can cook so hot in them and still have a good product, and and you can get it done. Uh, you just don't. If something goes south, you just don't have a window to fix it. That's all. So it's kind of a gamble. But you know what the heck? I'm at the gas station. Eh. I got guys, so you know, I can I can say go you know go put the fire out, guys. <laughs> so that that's no big deal for us. So, but I was amazed at the the usage of these pellets. People people ask me all the time when we when we sell grills. And I and I and I don't understand why it matters, but everybody, it's like I guess it's because it's like I sell gasoline for a living, and people say you know, we'll talk about cars. And I go, well, what kind of gas mileage does it get? And I said, I literally haven't thought of gas mileage in 38 years. I'm sorry, you know, I don't. Gas mileage doesn't mean anything to me. And I guess when you're surrounded by a bunch of pellets. Pellet usage doesn't mean anything to me because I've got plenty there. But for the consumer, that's a concern. Yeah. And if pellet consumption for you is a concern, this is the pellet that's built for you because you will get the higher temperatures and it, and it will, the low ash means only one thing. It's burning more efficiently. It's burning every bit of material in that thing. It's leaving nothing behind. And the, and the temperatures that it gets to 
are are used by fewer by fewer um, amount of pellets. It's that simple. Yeah. I had a question I, for you both. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One thing I noticed is, you know, I was at Steve's shop, and it seemed like those charcoal pellets were more dense. Yeah. You know, I try. You know, you can take a regular, you know, pellet, you can snap it in half. I was trying to do that with a, a charcoal pellet, and it wasn't nearly as easy. It's just, yeah. does that have to do with that ash content, or you know, how much ash it kicks up? I really think it's because the process that they use to create these is compressing so hard. And so, but it's not so hard that it's going to hurt your auger, but it's just the way it, there's almost kind of that sheen on the outside. Mm -hmm. when you look at it, that's not binders, that's not fillers. That is just charcoal and the process of compressing it and shooting it out. It's almost kind of gives it that gloss um, on it. And I think that's why it's hard. You're, you're having a more difficult time because when you think about the other pellets, they're wood and fillers, and there's there's a weakness to them that allows you to snap them. There's no weakness to this. It is just charcoal. That's what it is. That's 100% charcoal. Now, Megan, we did. I did do an experiment with them at the, at the, at the shop last week. I put, um, I guess, about 10 or 11 in a bowl of water. And then, <laughs> then right next to it, I put 10 or 11 regular pellets in the bowl of water right next to them. Um, of course, the, the regular pellets swelled up almost immediately. Um, the the charcoal pellets never did, oh. never did, and I didn't think to use them. I was gonna, I was gonna. Somebody said try to light them on fire after you soak them, and I, I didn't even think about it. But um, we did it. Oh, did yeah, you? Craig, yeah, the ninja and I did it. We used them, and it was like, oh my god. I mean, because there's nothing to penetrate. There's no weakness to them. There's the water can't get in, and charcoal is inherently a, a water proof, a water resistant material, and so then you put it through the process that it's doing and all of a sudden now there's there's no way for them to you know absorb the water or take on the water it just you know, they dry out you know, you know and see, you're ready to use them again see that's why i want to be more friendly with ninja he does cool <laughs> he's things great. you know he's he a, does he, do cool things. he's a cool do you guy know, do you know how i met craig uh, -uh. mr mr barbecue ninja he and i were on chopped grill masters together and the first episode of that Grillmaster season, I think we were season four, and um, I went on to win that episode. So Craig and I have continued to be great friends and um, really try to do a lot of great things together and see each other at Memphis in May and out on the barbecue circuit. His his alligator stories are just off <laughs> off the chain. <laughs> yeah, talk about authentic. Like that man lives the dream. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, he is the. Uh, uh, the the Gator McCluskey, the old <laughs> the old you know uh, Jerry Reed character, you know Amos Moses, I guess you'd what, call what's him. That, what's that movie where the guy loses his the golf coach loses his hand and he coaches? Uh, oh, uh, Happy Gilmore. Oh, Happy Gilmore, yeah. yeah he's Chubbs Peterson. Yeah, Chubbs yeah. Peterson. There you go. Hey, let's take there our last break. Let's take our last break done. of the day, and we're gonna um, come back and. Uh, Wrap things up with Megan Day, and we're going to hang out a little bit longer on Facebook if she'll have us. Uh, if you want plenty of flavor on your barbecue, you want Uncle Steve's Shake Rubs. Plenty of flavors to choose from that are time-tested by the greatest backyard barbecuers just like you. Get your Uncle Steve's Rubs at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Go in the store, turn right, turn left at the corner, and they're right back there on the right. Uncle Steve's Shake Rubs. That's good stuff. We'll be right back with Megan Day of Burnt Finger Barbecue from Kansas City here on Talk Radio 102.3. Stay with us. WGOW. Your voice heard here. Not only did you know Chubbs, you knew the last name. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja's a good guy. He is. He Al, is. Al Salvage asks, are prices going up on pellets? Uh, I, I, if they do go up, it will be, go, be a transportation issue. Yeah. I know that. I know I know that. Yeah. That is a great question. Yeah. Um, man, I tell you what, it's uh, get, just getting things. It's just so difficult now. It's it's really it's the the logistics part of it is what really worries me um just the price of shipping and the price of labor I, man i hope i just hope it can can bounce back or that something i don't know 
something Megan, has to give. Megan, it's you just too, it's just too expensive. You and your husband and Burnt Big Burnt Finger Barbecue, you yes. sell your your um, meats online. Tell us about that <laughs> during the break here. Yeah, so we really where we sell sell our meats is on the Home Shopping Network. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we do, and then every now and then we'll have access to some additional meats that we'll put up on our website and sell personally too. But it's all going through the same warehousing system that we do um, through our Home Shopping Network sales. And as a matter of fact, I took a phone call from a woman today who said, "I got your pulled pork, and I had a question." And she, I am, you know, I had answered the the customer service line, and she said, "Is this the Megan that was?" on TV talking to me about my barbecue? I said, yes, it is. And she's like, I can't believe you're answering your customer service questions too. And I'm like, that's, it's just my husband and I, it's, this is our business. So yeah, that's always fun when people realize that you really are the person behind it, the person that's doing it and the person who's representing it. So, so you, you are on home shopping now. I don't, I don't watch yes. it. I don't yeah. watch it because I just it's not it's not my deal. It's not your yeah. But so but you're on. You there, don't fit the demographic. Let me just say. Uh, that. So you're like you're like the like the girl that invented the mop, the the yeah. uh, the yeah. shawala or whatever Joy. like that. That is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. You're like uh, like Billy Mays. I am. Yeah, the sham wow or something. You know, and it's it's been really interesting with the pan pandemic. Uh, we started doing it live from our kitchen at home oh, through how cool. Skype. Oh, how cool. Yeah, and so I used to have to fly down to St. Pete and go see Dr. Barbecue down there. And uh, St. Pete and for their studios were there, and we do everything kind of in the same set. Well, what they've discovered is now that we're doing these, um, you know, in our own home, people are watching. They're very curious. Well, what appliances does she have in yeah. her house? And there's, it's, you know, it's not the same static set for every single product that they're selling and people have really enjoyed kind of the, almost a voyeur right they want to see what's going on in someone's when someone's home and their environment and so it's been very successful because i think people feel a little more connected to the person who's talking about the product that they're hoping you'll you know bring into your home so it's been it's been very fun to, there, to do it from home there was a guy in, here in chattanooga that was rating the homes of the television personalities that were reporting from their homes. He was he was saying who has the nicest house, who's got oh, the no. best background. Oh, it was hilarious. The background. It was, it who's was got, yeah, who's and got, it was the uh, family. Latrice Curry from Channel Three. He decided that she had the nicest home of any of the other television That's celebrities. That's fantastic. Oh, it was, it was it was it was funny. It was very funny, very respectful, but it was it was hilarious. I know what you're meeting. I mean by I know when 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 when. Um, Meathead is on a show. You can watch the chat room, and people are going, "What's in those shelves back there? What's on that? What's on that? What's in that well, dresser?" They, you know, they, they're not paying any attention to him. They, they want to know what's in the set. Well, you know, we say it. Absolutely. And right back, but weekday afternoons, sports talk, still the afternoon like the destination for more than a generation. One hundred two point three FM. It does. Talk radio. One hundred two point three. Myron Mixon, My Matt Pittman, David Bosco, Rub Bagby, Mike Davis. You've heard of all these guys, and all these guys' barbecues, rubs, and sauces are available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. The pros know flavor, and your favorite pros flavor is right here at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Four minutes in left, Ottawa. Steve. How many, Curry? I'm sorry. You got four minutes. Four minutes, Megan. We're, we're here with Megan Day. We're talking with her about the pellets. Megan, the other products that um, – Royal Oak has got in their um, distribution chain that you are a fan of. Huge fan of tumbleweeds. Huge, huge fan. I love being able to, whether I'm cooking lit, like on a charcoal grill or if I'm even lighting like a chimney, you know, just yeah. something like that, bonfires, anything I need to get some quick heat. Um, or sometimes I'll even just light the chimney and cook a steak on, on top, <laughs> right? and get that intense heat from that and i love um rather than having to burn paper towels or newspapers or anything else to yeah. create kind of that soot um i love those um i recently had a chance to cook on some of their plank um, cedar planks i did a really fun a shrimp recipe. We have a barbecue um, bacon seasoning and so I put that on top of the shrimp on that plank um, cedar piece and it was delightful. It was so good and that was really fun to see that they've kind of come out with that product as well. And then this last weekend uh, for the 4th of July we did a whole hog and we used their briquettes um, and I gotta tell you that was some seriously intense heat. <laughs> we used the La Caja China 
um, roaster box mm -hmm. and put the those briquettes right on top. Um, when we cook on a gravity fed, we always use their lump charcoal. So I'm a fan of a lot of the different products that they have done. And I think that's why they kind of saw that we were using it organically. And when they approached us and said, hey, we've got an idea about pellet. So let's talk. Um, we've got the, along with the pellets, we've got the uh, lump charcoal and we've got the natural <laughs> briquettes too. And, um, and and as you as you did last on the fourth, we did the same thing. We did a whole hog as well, yeah. using the lump charcoal. And um, once we got it dialed in, it, it did great. So yeah, you, you know it was, How, what what did you use to smoke it, or cook, did you roast it? We we bought a a Carolina pig cooker. And it, Very it's, nice. It's a monster. Gotcha, Kirk. And it is it was wonderful. It worked great. It's a uh, you you use charcoal for the first oil six hours and then you switched over to uh, propane and to finish nice. it and it was it was nice i mean it, it, good it, crackling on the skin yeah we did we didn't serve the skin we cooked it uh skin side down but um the the, the for our first one ever it, it was it was fantastic we did we did cure the hams though you the did? night before we did we with, yeah. with quick cure yeah, and that worked that was a great idea we had that is a great idea. I don't, try, we have not done that. Try the now, next do time. you do you serve it with vinegar sauce, or how do you how do you serve it? Uh, we just pull it and then let the people use the sauce. Just do their own sauce. Yeah, yeah, just do their own sauce. Hey, we're gonna have to run out of here, Megan. Tell everyone where they can find Megan Day and Burnt Finger Barbecue, please. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, Burnt Finger BBQ. That's one finger. Um, I won't tell you which one, but Burnt Finger BBQ, and you can find us at burntfingerbbq.com. And on HSN, if you're looking to get some meat shipped straight to your freezer, you can go there. And then we've got sauces and seasonings that you know you can find all over the country, and hopefully in Owl's Nest soon, right? Absolutely. We, we, <laughs> I contacted Old World uh, yesterday, waiting for their return Perfection. email. Absolutely. I sure did. Uh, Megan, thank you so much for being on the show. If you will hang around for the bonus hours on the Facebook uh, side of things. If everybody's listening to the radio, if you can get access to Facebook, by all means, go there for some more conversation with Megan on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Facebook page. Uh, we will be back here next Friday. You will be on vacation. I will be here. Aaron will be here. And we will have another fantastic informational show about the one thing we all love, and that is barbecue. Until next Friday night on the radio side, this is Steve Ray for Jeff Maxwell. For Aaron Carver and for Kirk, bidding you farewell. And remember, good night and good luck to everyone. The News Watch never stops. We've got it coming. I may have to call in. Thanks, the Kirk. Guy's voice. Yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. Appreciate you. All right, we're going to stay live on uh, Facebook with Megan Day. Um, Megan, we get. Help me out here. The, one of the biggest questions we get about the pellet cookers is the lack of smoke flavor. Now, you cook professionally on one on the contest, on the uh, competition circuit, on the KCBS competition circuit. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me what, do you, what does the burnt finger barbecue, what's your secret about imparting more smoke into your meats on your pellet cooker? Because this is, this is going to be a, a big topic. <laughs> yeah, uh, so a clean smoker. Mm -hmm. is okay. very, very important. We actually don't impart a ton of smoke, but if we do want extra smoke, we have a burn pot um, where we can put extra pellets down inside this little kind of burn pot that you stick right over the top of the fire. Um, and it will continue to to smoke. Mm -hmm. The lower you have a temperature, the more it's kind of smolder and smoke. So you're going to get more smoke that way if you want it. Um, I think sometimes you know people use smoke a, a little too aggressively, mm -hmm. and so I, I I I like to use it as a spice as opposed to the dominant flavor. So it's just adding another layer of you know. Uh, smoke likes fat, so anything that's fatty is going to pick up some of that smoke. But at at a certain point, it's going to stop taking on those nice flavors and start to get that acrid flavor. Um, so for us, it's really important to make sure we have brand new tin foil anywhere that we you know are trying to keep it clean, uh, keep as much of 
of the smoker cleaned out as possible because we want everything burning in there just to really be the mm -hmm. smoke that's hitting it and nothing else um, rancid or, or foreign flavors um, hitting the meat because it will absorb it and take it on. Now, our, our mutual friend, David Bosca, has a, a great interest in these uh, um, uh, royal oak pellet, um, charcoal pellets. Yeah. And um, I, I told him that I, I did cook. I did cook with that. I did do that. But and the flavor was, I mean, it was perfect. I mean, it, the flavor of the, the imparted flavor from the smoker, I thought was really good. It was a little different. I felt, I, I, I noticed... I noticed the biggest difference I noticed was the smell when I was burning the when I was burning mm -hmm. the pellets. You did you do get that, uh, you know, the grill that that it's that, a gr it's a familiar grill. Flavor. Yeah, that, it's that, a smell. That, yeah, it's that wonderful that that wonderful feeling you get when you, you know, you crank up your, your your Weber, uh -huh. what do they call them, Jeff Weber, it's whatever. It's a it's a nostalgic. Kettle. Yeah, the Smoky Joe. Yeah, you, it's Smoky nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I did notice that, that it had that, and I was real, uh, real excited about that. I think these are going to be a real winner, and I think they'll be a real winner for a long time to come. I think well, it's be and a... I think too, judges are liking that that charcoal flavor mm -hmm. profile. They really are. If you're into competition, um, I think it, it's going to be an interesting um, addition to our arsenal. I, there's just no question that it's it's it is, it is going to be something people want to play with. I went by Steve's store uh, the other day. He was just doing a burn off with some of the um, with some of the pellets, and I noticed the smell when I got out of my car. Uh -huh. And to me, that smell for the backyard cooker when your guests arrive and you're getting that different hmm. smell, yeah, yeah, uh, is enticing. It is enticing. You know, and so that you know you you eat with your nose too. Yep. You know, you eat with your eyes. Absolutely. So when you're burning those, you're it's going to make that that barbecue more appealing in my eyes you know and we're we're talking barbecue but it's also you know a cookout like that's a cookout smell yeah. i mean right. really exactly. it is yeah well more people are using pellet cookers in their backyard than they are in competition i mean more people are cooking oh, in their heck backyards. Yeah. yeah well and that's and that, i mean you you have the choice you want something fast you have a choice for gas or you can go a pellet cooker right if you're talking speed mm -hmm. getting something heated up get something knocked out and move on down the road. Uh, and now you've got the chance to do fast and charcoal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's really and that's exciting. That's exactly what I did last Saturday night and I couldn't been, I could not have been happier with the product. Yeah. And we are, we are just uh, thrilled to death to be part of the, uh, the, the breakout program that they're doing. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this will get our foot in the door for the other products. And uh, you, you know, you mentioned the, um, the little tumbleweeds. We we, yeah. we we bought a whole pallet of those, <laughs> and um, I've never. That's a couple. Yeah, yeah. That's I, two or three. I don't know if I was, it was a mistake I made, or I, but I don't understand why I got that many tumbleweeds. But it's okay. We'll we'll be we'll have them to sell from here forever. And <laughs> I'll come buy a package. They're we'll not just perishable. Make it feel good. You won't you won't see any more uh, Weber cubes in the store. I promise you that, because <laughs> we're we're gonna have tumbleweeds forever. But um, I started. That's the first time I ever used them. Was the other day when I started my. Uh, uh, my, my charcoal fire for a, uh, a gravity cook that I was doing and uh, man those things work good I mean yeah. they are hot and they got that they got the charcoal fit, got it heated up and going do you like to do you like to cook with different cookers I, that's my favorite thing about barbecue I, I've got so many different kinds I love doing all kinds of different things I do I do and it, but it does make me appreciate what I love you know makes me realize what I really do like there it is really fun I, but you know, you you have hot spots and understanding the airflow and just really getting in and and figuring out what works better with low and slow. One thing that I really have not played much with is is a good you know stick burner. I really have not played a lot with a stick burner. Mm -hmm. um, it's just nothing that I was really exposed to. Um, when I started helping out Jason with the barbecue cook, we were really it was gravity fed. And then we moved into the the pellet mm -hmm. um, shortly after that, and so we had a good one at one point that we cooked a bunch on, and you know it was great. But it, we charcoal, we did lump charcoal with it, and we throw some some wood chunks on it. But really, that's something that I haven't cooked a lot with mm -hmm. that I would like to. But there's a little barrier there. Those things are expensive. Yeah, <laughs> most and, often. and if you have children, you're not. I mean. 
when you're that's, doing, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a very labor and I don't care who's you use it. It is. Um, and, I'm, and that, I mean, I love it. And if someone, if I can go over to somebody's house and cook with them overnight, one night with it, like that's probably the better option for me because you, you nailed it. I mean, we, our kids are very, very much a part. You saw Meredith run through mm -hmm. here. I mean, we are a family that cooks together. Like both my daughter and my son get to do the American Royal kids queue this year. I'm oh, cool. so excited. They're both old enough to cook. You know, we really cook with them and it's just not feasible for me to be up um, babysitting a fire and driving a fire all no. night long. I, it just doesn't make sense right now for this season of my life. <laughs> but when you do, when you do yeah. get a stick burner, make sure that you, if you can, and I'm sure you've got the connection, try to find a Myron Mixon water cooker. Okay. That would, uh, you would really enjoy that. That is a, a very, great. it's a very good experience with a stick burner on a quality piece of equipment. You know, the first um, on our team, when we first got into this, we went out and bought a uh, a big old uh, stick burner that leaked. It, it leaked like the Exxon Valdez. Right. And uh, I mean, we it, we would have- I'm impressed you did that and you're still doing barbecue because that can be a big turnoff to people if you have something that just is so inefficient. Oh, uh, we, you know, to get up to 230 degrees took, you know, four ricks of wood. It was, it was, uh, it was brutal. But you know, we we cooked on it for a year, and then and then moved on and got you know some nicer stuff. We went to Gravity, and mm -hmm. um and then, and I still that's still my, uh, well my favorite thing to cook on is the Myron mix and water cooker. If we're gonna just do something big and um you know that big cook, I I, I enjoy that because that thing reacts. Megan, I'm not kidding. Uh, when you're when you're managing the fire, it reacts like a Ferrari. It, hmm. You just you have to move the the levers just a little bit and this thing really reacts that's awesome and um it, it is awesome um but it's my go-to is a uh, gravity feed we use uh, scott smith's uh, southern q smokers and um they're they're great they're fantastic and uh, and i know what you mean by the easy you know a gravity feed smoker is just a, a big pellet cooker it's all it is yeah. well and it it keeps and holds the temperature mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you know we're excited about that okay thank you so much for joining us anything um any other big tv appearances on the horizon for you that we can make sure we watch yeah no there's nothing i can talk about oh okay okay way. i understand um that. but yeah no nothing nothing that i can really talk about at this point but um here in kansas city we have the barbecue festival um that is happening and on sunday i'm going to do a demo i'm going to show everybody how to do some competition ribs so if you happen to be in the kansas city area um, or just watch my social media. I'm sure I'll give you some behind the scenes of what I'm doing. But yeah, we're just, I, I never know when a phone's going to ring, someone's going to say, hey, fly up fly up to New York and let's do the Today Show. So I feel very blessed that when they're looking for for somebody and need a resource in barbecue that I get some of those phone calls. So just well, keep you, watching our social media and we'll you'll see where we are next. If if Hoda ever says, and do you know do you know like a, an older fellow that uh, might do barbecue too that that may own a gas station on the side? You know, they, you know, you, you know, they look for specialty things. You know what I'm saying? You Heck go, yeah. I got your guy, Hoda. I, I am I actually a great resource for them. They will call and say, do you know someone that's got this or this part of the country? I'm absolutely a resource. So Chattanooga. Is, be, Chattanooga's Chattanooga. Got a, we got a direct flight. Oh, real quick. I like it. Tell me about your, before we go, tell me about your Chattanooga con connection. I almost forgot. Oh, I, uh, I, it's, it's a girl that I went to college with, um, her husband, they live in Chattanooga. So that's really all I know is every now and then I'll see Amy's posting and, and she's, she's right there in Chattanooga. So, and then I had another sorority sister actually, who for a long time, so full, sold pharmaceuticals in Chattanooga, but now she lives in Birmingham. So mm -hmm. yeah, not there. So well, not, have you ever been, have you ever been to Chattanooga? I have not. Oh, I've you been should to come. Birmingham, but I've never been up to Chattanooga. So if you come and I'll visit. You can swing test through out that Myron Mixon. Yeah, that's right. I do plan on um, I'm, I'm hoping I get the invite to judge the Jack this year. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to judge it for a couple of years. So I'm hoping we can do that. Maybe we can take a jaunt over. Yeah, it's not far. I'll, matter of fact, no. matter of fact, I think I will be there this year. I'm, I'm, that's I'm, great. Yeah. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll get to meet and um, <laughs> that I, I usually I usually get press credentials. So uh, that's great. Um, we've been a couple of times. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It, it is. I've been been fortunate to cook it and to judge it, so I get I've seen both sides. Uh, one of these days, I will cook it. One of these days. Did you see the news where they're doing away with yeah. the shade tree? Did yeah, you see I that? did. I thought it was a I shocker. That's a I was a budget shocker. thing. I that makes me sad, but I yeah. I also understand this business decision. I, I was I was I mean it was that was such a big part of uh, the Jack. 
was, yeah. was the shade tree division given you know people that are just you know backyard cooks a chance and um, a chance yeah. well maybe nothing's permanent maybe yeah, maybe no maybe someday it could come back I, I i'm just so lucky we still have that yeah well that contest uh, is a is such a monster to put on in that little town and, and if you have never been to lynchburg tennessee it's worth the drive to go anyway and yeah. um the uh and going to do it when the jack is is going on and that is september the 8th i think this year uh that weekend uh, is that right is it i think i think it is i think I is think. it because that's before the royal then i felt like it was supposed to be after after the royal i don't know i'll have to look i may be wrong but it's in september mm. it's in september where's it october well, well wait a should I look? Look yeah, at my look calendar. Well, look it up. So maybe it's October the eighth. Maybe it's October the eighth. Yeah. yeah, that's what Let I'm me see. I, well, did I say September? It is. It's it's October eighth. I was saying okay, October eighth. Like, oh, no. Okay. I knew it was the eighth. Because we, we September got, just got really busy. Yeah. We no, got October a bunch of stuff 8th. going on in yes, October here. That's... And I remember I, I kept the eighth open so I could go up to Lynchburg yeah. and see everybody. Yep, that's it. All right, good that's deal. That's it. The eighth. Megan Day, thank you so much. I'm glad we got that situated because everybody at home is going through their going steve's an idiot it's not in september no. <laughs> all right megan we'll thank it. you so much we appreciate you let's do appreciate this again you. um if you ever need anything in chattanooga you know where to holler i'm excited and same with kansas city we're here so absolutely absolutely one of these days i will get to kansas city come up to the royal the american royal will be there all right thank you megan day burn finger barbecue Bye. kansas city missouri what a great guest Ooh. everybody and thanks everybody on facebook for watching hanging out with us for a little overtime with megan and um what a great guest super person awesome. great awesome personality guest. and um man she she is what barbecue is helpful successful and, yep she got it all she's, she's great the whole package all right everybody we'll get right out of here ron aaron's gonna get rid of us there and um i'm working tomorrow you're going on your big 6800 mile motorcycle trek starts tomorrow yes, is that sir. right yes sir as soon as i wake up it's kickstands up yep so um Aaron and I will be here next Friday night, and uh, I don't have a guest scheduled yet. We're going to be talking about the different events that are going on in the Chattanooga area, but we will have a person, I promise you, who is interesting. And um, until next, are you we ready? To, you ready to, to get us out of here, Aaron? Good deal. Until next Friday night to our Facebook page. Good night and good luck.